Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a video going over what is in my gaming PC. So before we get started, I just want to give you guys a little apology in advance. I haven't done any videos in the last week because I got the flu at CES. I'm still not quite 100% over it, but it's time to do a video for you guys. Also, definitely be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video, as I've got a pretty awesome giveaway you guys are not going to want to miss. To start with, we have the case, which is a Fractal Design Define R4. So I've been using Fractal Design in several of my builds lately, and I've got to say I've been really liking how these cases look and work and all that kind of stuff. So the reason I went with this is mostly because I like a kind of a understated uh, look. So as you guys can see here, it's not really flashy, it's very simple, and yet it still obviously says, hey, I'm a gaming PC with that giant window. Powering the build is an Intel Core i7-2600K. So this is actually part of my a previous build. So what I did was I rebuilt it and used some of the parts for my old build in the new one. Basically, it's kind of a continuous work in progress, so I'm always adding more RAM or hard drives or changing fans or whatever, so it's just kind of a natural thing to continue to use some of the old parts. Uh, so this is a great CPU, it's overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. The motherboard is also from my previous build, it's a Gigabyte Z68 board. Now of course, like with the CPU and some other parts here, if you guys want to do this exact build, I really wouldn't recommend it. If I was buying it all brand new today, I would make some changes, but in general a lot of this stuff performs so close to what a brand new part would, it's really not worth it to scrap all the parts to get something that's like 2% fast. For a CPU cooler, I'm using the Corsair H100i. So this is a closed loop liquid cooler, so it's a lot simpler than doing a full water cooling loop. So of course you got to get a pump or a reservoir, your fitting, your tubing, your water blocks for your CPU, your graphics card. There's a lot of stuff that goes into that. And while it's definitely fun and it's cool to do, I do like these H100i and other kind of closed loop systems where all you got to do is mount it onto your CPU, put it in the roof of your case or the back or you know, wherever the reservoir, the reservoir, the radiator goes, and you're good to go. One thing I do want to mention though is that if any of you guys have a Define R4 or want to do a build in one, be careful. You can fit an H100 or H100i up into the top of the case, but you have very, very limited clearance. So while I was able to get it to fit up there, it actually overtops the motherboard just a little bit, so the top part, like maybe half inch or so, is behind the fans. And as far as routing the cables, if you want really nice, neat cable management, it is a huge pain to try to fit your fingers up there and try to route stuff. So you can do it if you guys want to, but it might not be a bad idea to you know maybe cut some extra holes in the top of the case, maybe move the uh, cooler over just a little bit. But overall, it's good stuff. For memory, I'm using 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR3 RAM. So this is pretty much some standard stuff. So back when I first got it, I think I paid something like $200 to get it. But nowadays, you can get 32 gigs for like 150 bucks, or even probably cheaper than that right now. So it's okay RAM. It's really nothing wrong with it. But uh, I definitely do plan on upgrading it, if only because the blue really sticks out, because the whole kind of color scheme of this case is black and white. And then you've got like four giant blue heat sinks kind of sticking out, which doesn't really look cool to me. So I will be definitely replacing this, most likely with some Corsair Dominator RAM, which looks awesome if you guys have never seen it before. It's got light bars and it's kind of like a silvery kind of finish, which looks really cool. I think it'll fit well in the build. But for now, this stuff works fine. And if you guys are interested in some cheaper stuff, I believe you can probably get 16 gigs these days for 60, 70 bucks. Definitely the weak link in my system is the Asus Radeon 6850. So this is an older graphics card. And while it does give you enough performance, which is the only reason I haven't really replaced it, it's really not meant to be in this build. I mean, all the other parts are kind of high end except the graphics card. But again, something that I will be replacing in the next few months. For my main SSD, I'm using a 250 gigabyte Samsung 840 Pro series drive. Now I'm a huge fan of Samsung SSDs. Uh, so I have an 830 in another bill which has been ticking away for a while and I have full confidence that it will continue to work for years and years. And the 840 Pro is the newer and much faster version of that. Uh, so again, 256 uh, gigabytes, although I have over-provisioned it, so it's only about 220 gigabytes usable. Uh, this is just a little tip and kind of getting a little off topic here. If you guys have an SSD, it's usually a good idea to give it a little bit more free space as it allows it to do garbage collection and that kind of thing to make sure it does stay nice and speedy. Uh, so not a whole lot to say about it. 840 Pro is, in my opinion, pretty much the best normal 2.5 inch SSD out there right now. And it's also backed up by a 128 gigabyte OCZ Vertex 3. So this is from my older build and again, uh, and so basically what I did was it's just set up as a Steam drive right now. So all my Steam games are loaded up onto the uh, Vertex 3. So anytime I want to play a game, I have that nice fast SSD load times without actually having to use up all the space on my main SSD. For storage, I have four drives totaling nine terabytes of storage. So these are all Western Digital Caviar Greens except a single Hitachi drive. And I really do like the Caviar Greens for data storage like what I'm using them for. Uh, they tend to run a little bit quieter and a little bit cooler. And also because they're, well, relatively cheap considering that you can get like a 3 
three terabyte drive, which is the latest drive I put in there, for about 130, 140 bucks. Again, I don't know the price off the top of my head. I will put links in the description. But anyway, I really do like the Caviar Green drives for data storage, especially if you do have an SSD for your, you know, your more important things that you want to get at a little bit faster. My power supply is a Corsair TX750. Now this is a good power supply, and I've had zero problems with the power supply itself. Uh, but again, this is definitely one of those things that I definitely plan on replacing fairly soon. Uh, so the big thing is, is that the cabling is not really that great looking. So you guys take a look, you can see a lot of the, at the ends of the cables, the wrapping didn't go all the way over, so you can see some yellow wires poking out, which doesn't really look cool at all. So that's one of the main reasons why I'm going to do it. I've thought about resleeving the cables themselves, but it's kind of a pain, especially considering that this isn't a modular power supply. So I've got a lot of cables that are going to be kind of hanging around, they've got to be tucked around anyway. So more than likely, I'll just be replacing this power supply with something, hopefully with better cabling. For lighting, I've added a pair of BitPhoenix Alchemy strips to the top and bottom, both in white. So I'm not really a big fan of kind of really flashy cases. I like my stuff to be a little bit more understated. And since I was going for a black and white color scheme, a pair of these white lights look really nice, especially when you turn off the lights and look through the window of the case. It kind of illuminates everything and makes it look really Really cool. Now these strips are really nice, they just plug into a Molex lead uh, to your, um, from your power supply, so it's really nice to kind of tuck them out of the way. And in fact, normally you can't even see them with the normal side panel on the case. So really good stuff, they're a little bit pricey, but if you want some really high quality lights that have their own adhesive, so you just kind of take off the strip, put them wherever you want in your build, and you're good to go. Giveaway time! So I've teamed up with my friends over at HH Greg, who are going to be providing three $100 HH Greg gift cards for you guys. So again, that's going to be three winners of three different $100 gift cards that you guys can spend on pretty much anything over there, including all their awesome electronics. They also have something going on, where they're giving away lots of really cool stuff, including Samsung TVs, Galaxy Note tablets, home theater systems, and even signed Dan Marino gear. To enter, it's super easy. All you need to do is go to the link in the description of this video and share the contest. So you can do this over several places, including Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Not only does that enter you into winning one of the three HH Greg gift cards, but it also enters you into the main contest, where you win all of the rest of the awesome prizes. And on top of that, you could also win the grand prize prize, which is a 60-inch Samsung 3D TV. The contest is running until February 2nd, so hopefully you will be one of the lucky winners. Anyway, that's about it. Good luck, and I will catch you guys next time.